Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad project. So let's get cracking. Friends, a user reached out saying, hey, how can you take a Thingiverse model and make it so you can modify it? Friends, I've got a technique. Let me show you what I did. So first, just for fun, this is the hinge after it's modified. Now I can take it into SimLab. I have got it connected to the sky by these two pivots. I could have lined them up better, but it really doesn't matter. The point is now when I hit play, they are separate parts. Of course, because of SimLab, I can throw things at it to show that it moves. So let me show you the technique I used to make that happen. First, I'm just gonna hide all of that. Now the user found this on Thingiverse. We downloaded the SDL. I kept all the measurements and I chose import. After a moment, we have this design, but it is one piece. You cannot break it apart with any built-in tools, but I've got a technique using brute force. Let me show you what we do. The first thing we're gonna do is switch to flat view, and we're gonna choose top, and I'll choose fit so that we're zoomed in. This allows me to do control D and duplicate. I'm gonna shift nudge to move that one away. And then I'm gonna bring out cubes, set them on the work plane, and then cut away the parts I don't want. So right now I'm going to keep this side and I'm going to cut away this side. If you need to be more precise, you can change your measurements to 0.25. I'm going to take that one and do control D, shift nudge down, and you can see that is going to cut away that whole chunk. And then I'm going to bring out another one. I'm going to set it down here. Notice if you set it here, it's really on top of the shape. So now I canceled that out and I can hit D to drop. So it is flat on the work plane. And now I can bring that across so we can cut that out. If I select all of those pieces and do control G, you can see that is now cut perfectly. We will remove the pin, but we'll do that at a later step. I'm gonna click on this shape. I'm once again gonna do F to fit view. I'm gonna look at it from the top. This time we're gonna get rid of this side. I'm gonna bring out a cube. Don't cruise it on the shape. Remember, bring it to the ground. And then we're going to stretch it across so that it cuts out all of these pieces. I don't want to run into the hinge, so I'm going to use that nudge. There's my 0.25 coming into play. That leaves the gap. And then since we got rid of these last time, now we're going to get rid of these. Set it down, bring it in place, and repeat the steps from before to get it all lined. Of course, if you make a mistake, just use Control z to fix it. Now we can select all those pieces and do control G to group it. Friends, it's time to remove that pin. Let's start by hiding this. Of course, make sure you've still got your flat view. I'm gonna click on this and do F to fit view. And I wanna look at it from the front. This gives us a look at this hole that the pin is sitting in. We're gonna bring out a cylinder and cruise it on the end of that. Notice the sides need to be maxed out. That makes it cut a lot cleaner. And then we're going to use Alt-Shift to shrink it around that shape. Notice if we get down close, you can see that 5 is likely the right number. I'm going to type that in and press Enter. I'm going to move my nudge to point 0.1. And I'm going to get it lined up exactly where it needs to be. Because of Fit View, we can now click, zoom in, and get it that accurate super easily. Now with that built, if we zoom out, this is all lined up for the next one as well. So if we just do control D and shift nudge back, it is already in the right location. We just need to get the exact measurements for how far in we want it to go. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna look at it from the side. Notice I go corner and then right. And then we can line this up for how far in we want it to go. So I'm gonna choose right there is how far in I want that to cut. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We can do something smart like change it to 44. And once again, let's do that L for a line again. Make this the master and center it. We are gonna make the pin with this same shape. Check this out. I'm gonna hide this so it's a little more clear. Control D, F to fit view. I am gonna change it into a solid. Orange is a good color. Now I make sure I click on the hole and I'm gonna hide it. We want to take this shape and go to the front view of it. And to make it the pin, we needed to make it size 4. Friends, this is so easy. If we hold down Alt and Shift, 
we just want to make it exactly four and press enter. We look at it back from that side view. Notice we did change the length of it. If we click back on this, we do want to make it back to 44 and press enter. Of course, then I'm going to do fit view and I'm going to do show all. And of course, we want to select it all and do L for align. I'm going to switch back to perspective view because that's easier for spotting this dot. And we want to make this the master and align it to the middle. With the pins aligned, let's quickly hide the hinge, click on our hole, and we want to hide the hole as well. So now we can click on the pin and we want to lock it. Now it cannot be cut. We can hit show all, grab all our parts. So right now when we do control G, we end up with a pin that is locked. We end up with a hinge that has the gaps all the way around it. And over here, we've got a shape that'll fit it. If we do control G to group that shape, we can now shift select the two shapes. Choose L for a line, make this one the master, and click the dot to line them up. Check this out. If we do T for transparent, you can see how all those parts work together. Notice this is still locked. If you wanted to make it a little further in, you can simply click on it and say 46. And then if we select them all and do L for a line, Make either of these the boss, and now you can see that that part sticks past into those solid parts for when you try to 3D print it. As I wrap up, let's give a shout out to the original designer, App Alexander, back in 2017. Of course, the link to this file will be in the description. I'm going to also take my project and I'm going to name it Hinge STL so I can track it down easier at a later date. Once again, huge shout out to Bob. For the project idea friends as i wrap up i do want to mention my website hlmodtech.com i have got a tab dedicated to tinkercad with tons of amazing categories below that you'll find the day one favorites the useful starters and the tinkercad essentials if you look down in the corner friends of course you will find the built-in messaging tool you can click that button add your question comment or suggestion and reach me almost instantly at the top of the page you can find a link to the tinkercad community discord as you can see, we've got a boatload of members and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a good